What's up, everybody? We are going to get straight into the, into this video uh, and start adjusting some of the play collision um, script. So, open up the play collision script inside the scripts folder, and we are going to go straight to. Uh, well, don't want to zoom. <clears throat> it's really touchy on a touchpad, <clears throat> and uh, we are going to create a few more um, um, collision t t detections. So, we're going to say if trig dot game object dot tag equals big log big log make it like that or lowercase um, uh, we're going to uh, hmm, take damage Take big damage. Cool, we're going to take big damage. Um, and then we're going to create a new void take big damage. And inside of that, we want to copy, well, we want to copy all of these actually. Um, except we want to make sure this is probably like a four. Four, four, <clears throat> and we just want to say health equals health minus three. And we want to change this audio source to another one. Um, for now, we're just going to leave it uh, there, uh, but we'll put a note in for the polish four. Polish for polish um, make um, different audio cool um, okay um, so that will, so if we get hit by the big log, that's what will happen. Uh, and we also probably want to say if um, trig dot game object dot, 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 dot tag equals um, big big token. Keep them as generic as possible. You can obviously call it whatever you want in your game. Um, <clears throat> then we want to um, we want to do all these things, and uh, we want to <clears throat> we can just copy this. For polish, make a different audio. Um, Tokens uh, equal, equals tokens plus 10 and changes the UI text to resemble that and then destroys the game object. Awesome, that's, that's fantastic. So now all we need to do is go into our um, game. Um, let's go to, let's say the big tree first. And we're going to tag that as big log. And is it big log? Let's just check. Yep, yeah, big log. And big token. Make sure it's spelled exactly the same. Big log, big token. Okay, so uh, looks good, looks good to me. Uh, so then all we need to do is um, inside of our prefabs, uh, we want to tag the uh, big tree with big log. And then we actually want to make the token. So if you remember when we imported our sprites, uh, I, there's a pink sprite here. Um, we want to drag that into the game, call it Big token. So 
not very big. <clears throat> let's if we drag the let's see token into the game, we want to make sure it's a little bit bigger than that. So token is at 2.5, so let's say 3, 3, 3. Let's be bigger. Five, five, five. Fantastic. Destroy me. We're gonna destroy after three seconds. Um, we can we'll adjust that later. Actually, in fact, remove that for now. We'll just leave it there. That's all good. And um, we're gonna add a rigid body and a circle collider and a token script. Rigid body two D. Make sure it matches. Start the weight continuous. Uh, circle collider. That's what we want. And um, token. Fantastic. So, uh, and then we want to drag that into the prefabs folder. Awesome. And now, uh, because we don't actually have a script that it doesn't actually uh, have a doesn't actually work yet, press play. Uh, Sorry, I need to tag it. I always forget the tags. Tag it as big token, and let's. Ah, that's why. Always, 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 always the case. So now I should click one, then now I got eleven. Sweet. So it adds twelve. That's exactly what we want. Fantastic. Awesome. So now we've got the big token in there. We've got the big log in there. Let's see if we can die with one big log. We won't actually because the big log. Uh, does not have a doesn't have the correct uh, still is trigger. I uh, want to freeze the position on the X and the rotation. Yeah, let's give it a go. Oh, make it a continuous. Hopefully that will work. Yeah, there we go. Yep, yeah, and it killed us. Sweet, so everything is working good. Our game's working really awesome and fine. So there's the main logic. The next thing that we can go into uh, is the fact that right now we have no menu and we have no um, uh, like data management. Um, so I actually covered this in my previous video, um, but uh, what we're gonna do is we'll cover that now uh, again but if you want a deeper explanation, uh, Mike Geig did a really good tutorial. If you just type in data persistence, um, a Mike Geig Unity tutorial on YouTube, you'll see an hour long video describing everything that I'm about to do. Um, and it's basically just a really quick and simple way um, to make sure that when, you, when your iPhone um, releases an update, that the player doesn't lose his high score or things like that. So we're just gonna create a simple script and we're gonna call it data management. So create C sharp script, data management. If you watched the previous um, uh, tutorial uh, I made, uh, you shouldn't need to follow along with this very specifically. You should be able to copy and paste your script from the last um, tutorial and it should work completely fine. So <clears throat> first thing, first things last, we're going to add some new um, namespaces. I'll go quick um, in, this in this, so um, if you want a deeper explanation, watch the video, but for, the, for now I'm just going to show you exactly what to type and give a quick explanation as I go. I'm not going to go too in depth, so yeah, here we go. 
So we're going to add some new namespaces. So we're going to say using um, system. And then we're going to say using system dot io dot runtime dot why is it not already completed? Sorry, system dot runtime dot serialization dot formatters dot binary and then using uh, system dot io. So these are just things that we need in order to use some of the methods and functions functionality we're going to be using. Um, so yeah, we're going to create a public static data management and we're going to call it lowercase data management. And we're going to get rid of, uh, we don't need a start method. And we don't need an update either, I'm pretty sure. No, we don't need an update. Um, we just need to write some variables in here. So my variables. And we're going to say uh, public int. Um, actually, should make it private. No, let's we'll make it public. Public int um, tokens high score. And then we're going to create a save method. So inside the save method, we're going to say void um, um, public void public void save data and we're going to create a new binary formatter and we're going to call it bin form and it's going to be equal to a new binary formatter um, we're going to create a new file stream and we're going to call it file and we're going to equal file dot dot create application dot persistent data path persistent data path plus game info dot dat and game game data, oh man, game data, data, equals new game data. So what I'm doing here is uh, is creating a new sort of class. So if we just go down um, below, we need to actually create that this class so it stops throwing this error. Um, so underneath the class, this is the first and probably only class in the whole game without any, um, uh, what's the word, without with two uh, classes in the same script. Um, so first thing we need to do is write um, serializable. So this may, means that everything under this, the everything under this class is going to be serializable. And we're going to call this class game data. And we're going to say, I uh, have a public int and we're going to call it um, token. We're going to call it the same as this. Fantastic. Um, all right, then uh, we want to write um, data, which is accessing that class dot. Um, token type score equals token high score. Fantastic. And then all we want to do is say bin form dot serialize file data. And that just writes <coughs> the data container to the file. And then we just want to write file um, dot close. 
cool. Then we want to create a new method, a public um, a void, not coid, <laughs> void load data. So this means you'll be able to save and load from wherever you want, which is what we want. <clears throat> and we want to say, start off an if statement, if file dot exists <coughs> application dot persist <coughs> just this part here if, if this exists then we want to create a binary formula bin form equals new binary formula and then we want to say file stream you can tell I've done this a few times file, I've created a lot of prototypes equals file dot open application dot persistent data path plus file mode dot open then we want to say game data data equals game data bin bin form dot deserialize <coughs> file and then we want to say file dot close, and we want to say, and then afterwards we want to say, um, um, what's it called? Tokens, tokens high score equals data dot tokens high score. Okay, and that should work um, perfectly fine. That should work. That, yep, I think there's nothing wrong there. Let me just quickly check over it. Um, in, we want to, because we're working with iOS, we want to create a void awake. And we want to um, write. I, I actually had problems in Galaxy Cube when I first um, created Galaxy Cube. In, it wasn't this wasn't working um, and it was because I didn't have this line of code in there um, and I found it on a unity forum all you need to do is make sure this line of code is in um, and it should oh what happened there and everything should work out fine um, well it will work out fine Fantastic. Just make sure, I'll just copy and paste it from that little website that I found it. Make sure that I have spelled it right. Because, to be perfectly honest, I'm not 100% sure uh, how this line of code affects things, but it definitely does. So just make sure it's the same as that. Okay. Um, Alright, everything else is happy. Happy days. So now, all we need to do is... Um, Whenever we uh, like want to save a high score, all we need to do is write data management dot data management dot um, high score uh, dot high score equals this, which is what we'll do in our game over method, which we can uh, do later on in the final polish of the game. Uh, but for now, we are going to get on to working on the menu. So let's get started. To do that, we're just going to go to our scripts and open up the game initialize script. And we are going to change this uh, up a little bit. So right now we've got basically nothing. Um, we've got just a play collide um, dot health equals three, which um, just helps the game always make sure that their health is the same every time we start. What we want to do is we want to create a uh, two variables, 
Oh, I don't I'll just make it a little bit smaller. Um, delete that. So we're going to create a public uh, static. This is the only other static in the game at this point, anyway. <laughs> um, called game started. And we're going to create a public game. public game object cam and then in the awake uh, method we are just going to create say that um, game started equals false and then in update we are going to just write um, well we need we need a way for the, the game to um, start and uh, later on we'll build some buttons and, and some the correct way to do things but just for debugging now uh, we're going to create a simple line of code that just means when you press the space bar it uh, starts the game so we're just going to say if input dot get button down and we're just going to say jump capital J and then when that when that happens, we're just going to say game started equals true. Get out another bracket there. Cool. And uh, we're just going to say if game started equals false, then cam dot game object. Um, dot transform dot position um, equals new vector three two um, I think uh, I tested this before I think uh, two um, dot one five f and minus one point four five f minus ten will suffice it might be different for your game if your scaling is a little bit different if you've used different assets but um, just adjust that uh, to whatever you like obviously that's the X that's the Y and that's the Z um, and that's just the cameras transform so next thing is cam dot get component we want to get the camera oops and we want to say orthographic size equals two. I just think this is a cool little effect that we can add to our game. And we're going to uh, create an else. So if game started is not equal to false, if it's equal to true, then um, cam dot game object game object dot transform dot position um, equals math. Actually, no, we'll do vector vector uh, three dot lerp from cam dot game object dot transform dot position two. Let's zoom out a little bit. Oh. Two um, a new a new <laughs> new vector vector. Man, what's happening with my brain today? Vector three. At zero, zero, minus ten. At um, two times time dot delta sign. I think we'll be fast enough, and we want to create something similar down. What is going on? No, oh, sorry, we need to add there. Cool. Then we need to just do the same thing basically, um, but for the orthographic size. So cam dot get component. Man, component um, camera dot orthographic size equals math f dot lerp cam dot get component camera all the graphic size five five times time time dot delta time cool 
Cool. So basically what it's saying is saying, um, uh, you know, obviously change the position from the camera's game object transform dot position to a new vector three, which is um, exactly what it's at at the moment. Um, and then from the orthographic size, um, change that from where it's at, from the cam dot orthographic size to um, five um, and at the speed of five times time dot time. I think that'll be fine. So if we go into our game, um, um, what we're going to do is we're just going to change this um, to um, first. Let's change the camera scale to ten. No, that's not what we want. We want say two, and change the position of the camera. Two fifteen. Cool, that'll be fine for now. So basically, uh, what I want to do is create a speech bubble uh, that, um, and that a couple of maybe menu buttons somewhere along in this screen area here. And uh, it'll basically just have like a small little bubble of text saying, help, help, Super Keegan or whatever. And then when the person presses play, uh, there is a line of code that is needing to be fixed. What is going on? Okay, so it uh, just turns out I, I wrote orthographic but didn't put in the orthographic size for some reason. I auto completed wrong. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so, yep, so get component. So it's going to um, go from the orthographic size to five at the speed of five times time to dollar time. So if we go to the scripts, go to um, the game initialize script and just drag over main camera, um, we should be able to press play. And then when we press spacebar, it zooms out. And that's, that's what we want. But the problem is now is if we press play, the uh, game starts already and our player can die, which is not what we want. Uh, and so that's the reason we created, and this is probably the main, the most important takeaway from this lesson, is that's why we created this um, public static bool a game started. Um, bool is a true or false, um, it's either true or false. So it's just, uh, yeah, so we created a variable called game started, and uh, all we need to do now is access that from other scripts. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is do that with the player move. No, actually, object spawner script. So we're just going to say in this update update method, super simple. We're just going to say if um, uh, game initialize dot game started equals false sorry that wants to be that's actually wants to be true but copy and paste that into there just need that code a little bit and change this back to true and so if it equals true then we can do all these things um, and so if we press play now player can still move, but nothing is being spawned until we press the spacebar, and then when we press the spacebar, stuff starts getting spawned, which is what we want, but one last thing we need to do is make sure that the player move, player cannot move until we do that. And you could put all of this in a big if statement, but we can actually just use an and in here. So we can just say, if input.get button horizontal and uh, game underscore init dot game started equals true and that's all we need to write um, you can actually well, copy this I don't think we need to put it down there cool So now the player can't move left and right, nothing happens. Um, we can have the text pop up here, we can have some buttons, we can have the option to, to turn the uh, music off if we like, all that stuff. And then when the player presses the button to play, start the game, it zooms out and the game actually starts. And that's exactly what we want. All right, guys, 
Well, that's it for this episode. Uh, next episode, we'll continue with the project. Um, obviously, every episode we continue with the project. I don't know why I keep saying that. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, make sure you like, favorite, subscribe, um, and share it with your friends. It's really um, cool to hear um, that you guys are enjoying these tutorials. Um, keep posting comments and uh, asking questions and growing as game designers. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.